Okay, we have a good one here today. This one's from the Florida integration B2016, problem 15. We have the integral from zero to infinity, sine two pi x, sine pi x over x dx. Okay, to get started with this, I think really what I wanna do first is I need to clean up this numerator. I can use the different angle formula for sine in order to transform this into something else. Let's just look at that formula really quick. So for this formula here, we just need our a and b values. So like we'll use for our a value, that's just gonna be two pi x. And then for our b value, it'll be the second angle, it's gonna be just pi x. So applying it here, we're gonna have this one half, and then we're gonna end up with two cosine expressions. It's gonna be the difference of the angles minus the sum of the angles. So the first one, subtracting angles, we're gonna have just cosine pi x minus the sum of the angles is just gonna be cosine three pi x. So what we'll do is we'll take this and put this back into our integral and I can bring the one half up front as a constant. And now from here, what I'd like to do is use Feynman's trick on this, but it's not quite as simple as some of the other things we've seen. So let's say if I parameterize this with the variable s, when you do this, what you wanna do, what we're trying to do is we want something that's gonna get rid of this x. And so you could do it like this, for example, and you could kind of split this up into two functions, right? Like kind of just splitting it here on the minus sign. So you could do it like this setting up our parameter on the x, because then when you differentiate this with respect to s, then you're gonna have, you're gonna get like minus sine and an x is gonna come out to cancel here. But the problem is when you integrate sine or cosine and you're going to infinity, that's gonna diverge. So I think you'll have a problem if you try to do it this way. So what I wanna do is something else. So what I wanna do instead is kind of go back to, I think I did an integral not too long back where it was like sine x over x. I think I wanna do it more like that, where instead of putting the parameter on the x, I can do it this way and create it up front like e to the minus sx. And this way with the e to the minus sx, we know that this is gonna converge, but also when we differentiate this, we're gonna have the x come out here. So we have this all over x. Now here for this numerator, the way for me to keep this general but not parameterizing the pi and the three pi, let's just write it as cosine ax minus cosine bx. And we'll just note that a is gonna be pi and our b value is gonna be three pi. And so later when we try to come back to the value for this integral here, we're gonna want, when s is zero, we're gonna want the f of, the, we're, we're gonna want the value for f at zero because when you plug a zero in for s here, this just becomes, a, this part just becomes a one and we get back to this if we just plug in our a and b values. And then just one other thing we're gonna need on here is let's just note that when s is going to infinity, this whole thing's going to zero. So we can use this value later that f when s is going to infinity is just gonna be zero. So now we just need to go ahead and differentiate here, but we're differentiating with respect to x. We'll differentiate inside the integral sign as a partial. And when we do that, everything over here to the right, this is all gonna be a constant value. Everything's in terms of x. So this is all gonna be a constant with respect to s. So just first integrating with respect to s here, we're gonna have e minus x, chain rule on minus s to the x, that's gonna be a minus x. And this is gonna be all over x in our and we'll bring along our cosine stuff here. But now I can cancel out the x terms right here and here. I'll bring this minus sign up front and we'll just leave it on the one half for now. And then from here, let's just split this up into two integrals on this minus sign here and see if we can evaluate these two integrals. Then at this point with our integrals broken up like this, we'll see that each of these are perfectly set up to use Laplace transform on it. This right here, this is gonna be the same thing as the Laplace transform of cosine ax. And this one over here, this is just gonna be the same thing as the Laplace transform of cosine bx. I do a playlist on Laplace transforms if you need some more information on this because we're gonna use some formulas. So like the formula for cosine ax, this is just gonna be s over s squared plus a squared. And it's the same formula over here. This is gonna be s over s squared plus b squared. But now that we have this and this, we have our full value for f prime of s. We're just gonna to need to integrate that in terms of s in order to get back to our f of s. And let's see how that looks. Okay, now at this point, we're just gonna to need to integrate because we're gonna to need to get it back to f of s because our goal, we need to calculate this f of zero value when we have this for our a and b values. So then, so coming over here, let's just integrate here on both sides with respect to s, integrate with respect to s over here. Now doing this out, of course, minus one half can come up front as a constant. These are gonna be easy integrals, so I'm gonna kinda of do it quick. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna multiply in a two on each of these. We can keep it all on one integral sign. 
So here I'm multiplying the two here as well on the S. But I don't wanna change it, so let's multiply by one half in front. And then each of these is perfectly set up to integrate because the derivative of S squared plus A squared is gonna be two S DS. And over here, S squared plus B squared, the derivative of that is gonna be two S DS. So we'll integrate this. This is gonna become minus one over four in front. This one's gonna become natural log of S squared plus A squared. I can drop absolute value because that's always gonna be positive. And then this one's gonna be the same kind of thing. This is gonna become natural log S squared plus B squared. And don't forget the plus C on this. Now let me get some simplification on this. We're gonna have minus one fourth. And with log properties, I can bring it in and write it as a fraction. So I can write this as natural log S squared over A squared, S squared plus A squared over S squared plus B squared. But now this is where we can use our initial condition on this because we're saying from the original, from our original setup, we're saying when S was going to infinity, the whole thing's going to zero. So coming down here, if we look at when S is going to infinity, we have minus one fourth, but then what's gonna happen is the A squared and the B squared is not really gonna matter. What's gonna happen for this part right here is when S is going to infinity, that's just gonna be a one, but then natural log of one is just zero. And so we have our plus C and we're saying this all equals zero. The way this is gonna work if we just have C equaling zero. So what I can do is just kind of get rid of this plus C over here. And we're gonna have this for our F of S value, but let me clean it up a little bit so we can kind of get back to our solution and finish this off. Now I could probably just leave this, but let's kind of clean it up a little bit more. For this one fourth, we could write it as one half times one half. And I could bring one of those into the exponent. And then also I can use this minus sign to flip this. So what I can do for this is leave a one half in front, natural log, get the reciprocal, which is gonna be S squared plus B squared over S squared plus A squared. And then I'm using one half in the exponent to write this all as a square root. And so now in order to get our solution, all we need to do is plug in the values that we set up originally. We know our A value, we know our B value, and we know S needs to be zero. So plugging that in for our f of zero with our a and b value, this is gonna become one half, natural log, the s's go away, and then we're just gonna have, for our b squared, it's gonna be three pi all squared, that's gonna be nine pi squared, over a squared, that's just gonna be a pi squared. Pi squareds are gonna cancel, square root of nine is just three, so for my final solution to this, we have just one half natural log of three. Okay, there you have it. Good one from the Florida Integration Meet 2016. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.